Hello, I'm Rob, the art teacher. In these short videos, I will share art tips, art projects, and lesson ideas that you can try at home or in your classroom. In a former life, when I was reading a lot of the French philosopher Michel Foucault's writing, I was particularly inspired by something he shared. Explaining why he writes, what he said was along the lines of, I write in order to know what it is possible to think. In other words, he saw writing as an act of discovery, of creation, and of being able to surprise himself with what appeared on the page, unpremeditated. Not as a process of transcribing what he already knew and thought. This idea has stayed with me over the years, and it has a parallel in art, especially in drawing. Think about it. Why do we draw? More particularly, why do we sketch? As a teacher of children at that stage when they want to make increasingly accurate observational images, I know that being able to unlock the power of observational sketching is so important. But where does this power sit? In what does the power of observational sketching reside? To help answer this, we can look at another French icon of the art world and someone whose work I keep coming back to time and time again, that of Paul Cézanne. Because like the philosopher Foucault, Cézanne the painter sketched and drew in order to see what he was looking at. I'll say that again. He drew in order to see what he was looking at. Not to transcribe or copy what he already knew. Just as Foucault felt he could not know what it might be possible to think without writing, so too Cézanne demonstrated in his work that for an artist, you cannot truly see what you're looking at without attempting to draw it. And this goes for sketching in whatever media, pencils, charcoal, pastels, watercolours. And did he discover anything? Yes, he certainly did. Look at the hesitation in his lines, the apparent uncertainty. Look here. And here. What are these double and triple lines at the edges of things all about? What's he doing? It's as if he can't make up his mind where the edges are. Where does this uncertainty come from? Well, Cézanne had learned something from the brand new 19th century science of optics, the study of how we see things, which had, for the first time in the history of human science, asked a very important question. Why do we have two eyes? Why are humans stereoscopic? What these scientists discovered was that having two forward-facing eyes makes humans particularly good at judging distances, at knowing how far away or how close things are, and whether things are moving towards us or away from us. Maybe we don't think about our stereoscopic vision much because usually we don't experience double vision. Or do we? And that is precisely the question that Cézanne asked when he was sketching. And he realized something especially important. When you contemplate something that is nearby, like this bowl of fruit on a kitchen cloth, you do actually see double images, but the brain normally suppresses this awareness because it organizes both images into a single view. But when you look at this bowl of fruit, for instance, your left eye sees everything slightly from the left, and your right eye sees the same things from a slightly different angle coming from the right. Cézanne used drawing to discover what this meant. And this explains the multiple lines, the apparent uncertainty in his sketches and drawings. It explains why his drawings and many of his still-life paintings, especially the watercolours, Look as if he doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, but he does. He's learned that his hand must follow his eye, no matter how surprising and unexpected the results. 
So what's the takeaway? And why do we sketch? We sketch to be able to see what the eyes see. To better see what we're looking at. We sketch to discover what we didn't already think things look like. We sketch to see for the first time. If we absorb this idea into our art practice, into our sketching practice, it will help us focus on looking as the primary action and focus on the microseconds of eye movement as our eyes move with uncertainty, with perhaps confusing double vision across the subject we are trying to draw. Try this with your bowl of fruit or pile of books or collection of bottles. Keep your head still, look at the still life with both eyes, now close one eye without shifting your head, look, and now open the other eye and close the first, look again. Switch to and fro between your eyes. Now where are the edges of things? Which edge are you going to draw? Part of you will want to choose one option. And the Cezanian part of you will want to show both views at the same time. Try it. Absorbing these ideas and being patient with your own confusing stereoscopic vision will open a door to new insights. And believe me, it will improve your observational drawing. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share. If you want to see more short videos with art tips, lesson ideas and art projects, please hit subscribe and the notification bell.